Namaste angels. Thank you for liking, sharing, joining me, subscribing, everything that you do to support me. Thank you so much um, for being here. Hopefully you're here for the premiere. This is the weekly general reading for the period of Sunday, April 14th, which is Palm Sunday through Saturday, April 20th. So Palm Sunday is the day that it's recognized that Jesus returned to Jerusalem riding on a donkey, you know, just looking very proud and regal and victorious. And he was celebrated as he, you know, passed onlookers. It reminds me so much of the Six of Wands, that card, the Six of Wands, especially the one in the traditional tarot. <coughs> Excuse me. Except for that guy's riding a horse. And like I said, Jesus rode in on a donkey. Um, so maybe we'll see that card. I just thought about it. Uh, how much it reminds me of. Of course, the king of earth also reminds me of Jesus. Especially or particularly those of you who've been watching me, you know, for longer than a year. You know, um, you probably know that for me, Jesus is a Virgo. He is a Virgo. Yes. Um, and I, I've given a couple of days in the past that I feel might have been the exact birthday. And I've given at least circumstantial evidence to make other people go, huh, uh, you know what? Sounds like he probably wasn't Virgo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm not going to do that now because although I have my laptop back and Mercury retrograde is over and things have, you know, really, really improved. And I've been able to get super, super caught up. Um, I have a couple of readings that are done that I have to actually upload, um, to people. So I wanted to go ahead and record this one and put it out for the collective. And then maybe while they're watching it, they'll receive their personal one in their box. Um, my dad is in the hospital now. He is generally well. So th thank you anyway, because I know some of you are going to be saying, oh, I hope, you know, well wishes to your father. I know, I know my viewers. So thank you in advance. Um, but he's generally well. He has a chronic um, illness and he is participating in a study that's being conducted in the hospital. So um, even with that, I've had to run back and forth and he needs this, he needs that and different things. So, um, you know, Mercury retrograde ended. I got my laptop back and things started to improve, although there was still a funky like haze and cloud over some of the days because and because of the Lenten season, as I've also discussed in my past videos um, this time of year, every year, beginning with my first one, there are Judases. Um, there's a lot of um, people, you know, trying to put like, bad juju um, on folks and curses and whatnot. Um stuff people are losing things people are breaking things stones are breaking because they're there to protect us jewelry's breaking and you know becoming lost <sighs> people are coming down with like illnesses you know not illnesses like you know diseases and stuff and at least nobody that's come to me but like not feeling well um a lot of headaches a lot of the, the spiritual attack psychic attack um and this is the time for it it just goes on just goes on in Linton season in my, you know, experience and observation and teaching. It happens, you know, um, friends hurting friends or, or so-called friends hurting friends or worse. Like what we saw happen with, um, you know, Nipsey Hussle that was put to rest yesterday, you know, rest his soul. But somebody that had been his friend murdered him. Um, just like what happened with Jesus, somebody that had been his friend is who handed him over to be murdered. Somebody else that was his friend, like his BFF, basically, um, said he didn't even know him. He didn't want to be associated with him. Right. Three times he did that. Um, that, you know, in part leading up to Jesus's death. And that wasn't the first time it happened. You know, um, Osiris and Set. Set set up his brother Cain and Abel um Moses and and Pharaoh he had been raised in the palace as the Pharaoh's nephew they turned on him you know he when he went to be with his people and helped to lead them so this is not the first time Judas's fake friends um just evil people jealous uh envious hateful just mad people fucking mad I had I had a couple of like seriously low vibrational people 
um, to deal with last week. And I just, just you know, what I, how I decided I was dealing with them, I decided I wasn't. I remembered that my New Year's resolution was that I wasn't going to have arguments with people whose vibration wasn't high enough um, for them to, you know, debate anything. Like, realize see perspective and, and, you know, and all that kind of stuff and have open minds. And, you know, I don't like to get into education and stuff like that, but there are people that are, you know, I'm arguing with people that were not only, um, closed minded, but, you know, potentially less educated than me and, or, you know, or educated in different things. Like I'm out of the two of us, I'm more of an expert on a particular subject. They want to debate me. Like you want to debate me about accounting and you're, you know, you work in a retail store. Like, that doesn't make, doesn't make sense. <laughs> and I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to use my energy. These are energy vampires. You can come across those two. Um, but then I realized, as I sat here to go over what went on in history on these days that I'm going to mention in a minute, I noticed that I was moved to pull out my soul's journey cards. And I don't think I've pulled them out in, in you know, at least a couple months. But I, you know, I did. I just found myself shuffling them. And I didn't realize until just now, looking over, that I'm starting with envy. And this is, like, so appropriate. The card says, I'm the same as everybody else, but with different challenges. And we each need to remember this so that we're not envious of other people. So also, yeah, I'm starting with the King of Earth. And Jesus is a Virgo to me. All right, so let's get into this. Um... On the calendar, the Christian calendar, again, on the 14th, we celebrate Palm Sunday. So that is that day that Jesus came riding in on the donkey. On the 17th, Thursday the 17th, that is Holy Thursday. So Holy Thursday was basically a Passover Seder that Jesus, as a Jew, um, in Jewish tradition, you are what your mother is. Now we know that... Um, Joseph was technically Jesus' stepfather, but he was he was also a Jew. And I'm sure most people would presume God has no religion, right? <laughs> He's just this om omniscious uh, being. He has no religion. So he was not a Jew. And if you believe that that was Jesus' father, so his father, religion doesn't count. His father didn't have one. His mother was a Palestinian Jew. And so in, Jew in Jewish tradition, um, you are what your mother is anyway. And so he was a Jew, and this Thursday he was celebrating um, Passover. He was at a Passover Seder. Passover is the um, day that is recognized that the angel of death passed over the homes of any Jewish people who had put lamb's blood on their door to protect their firstborn child. Um, so Jesus was at that dinner and, um, you know, eating with, again, people who, some of which were his really, really good friends and really loved him, um, supported him and would have laid down their own lives for him and subsequently did, and some not so much. Um, following Holy Thursday is, of course, Good Friday, the day that Jesus was picked up and murdered. Uh, crucified on a cross after being like paraded around in what's called the passion of the Christ the stations of the cross so if you're um, Roman Catholic in particular or if you care to visit a Roman Catholic Church on Good Friday you will or you can participate or, you know, or walk the stations of the cross. All, all Roman Catholic churches have a depiction of each of the stages. So like the crowning of thorns and, you know, a woman washes Jesus' feet and this and that and that. And actually in Catholic churches on Good Friday, you can have your own feet washed. Um, oh, it's exactly 11-11 on Friday, April 12th right now. Um, yeah, you can have your own feet washed and you know participate in that so that's any roman catholic church even if you don't go to church and you don't practice you don't believe anything if you're interested in doing that you can look you can walk into a, a roman catholic church um and, and participate in this uh also a lot of people like to go and go to confession 
um, during Holy Week, you know, to sort of start fresh and resurrected and born again, you know. Um, so that's for up for consideration you know, as, as one sees fit for themselves. So Friday, um, the 18th, again, is Good Friday. And then that would be followed by Holy Saturday, which is basically just the day after Good Friday or the day before um, Resurrection or Easter Sunday. And then that is what the Sunday is. So um, moving to the Hebrew calendar. Um, the 19th is the fast of the firstborn. So in commemoration of, of that Passover passing over of those homes and with the, by the angel of death, they now have a fast of the firstborn and only the firstborn child is sort of required. You know, if anybody in the family is going to participate, um, in this fast, it is the firstborn who is expected to. Um, yeah, let me just read this to you quickly. The fast of the firstborn is a unique fast in Judaism, which usually falls on the day before Passover, the 14th of Nisan in the Hebrew calendar. Unlike most Jewish fasts, only firstborns are required to fast on the fast of the firstborn. This fast commemorates the salvation of the Israelite firstborns during the plague of the firstborn. So there you have that. Um, let's go to the planetary calendar, the celestial calendar. And, um, there we have a lot more going on. So on April 17th at 2.01 AM, Mercury enters Aries on April 19th. Um, so Holy Saturday at 7.12 AM. We have the full moon in Libra. It's the second full moon in Libra in, you know, a little over a month only because we had the March full moon was also a full moon in Libra. April 20th at 4.55 a.m. The sun enters Taurus. So that's super positive. Um, so that means by the 21st, 22nd at the latest, despite whatever calendar, you know, Zodiac calendar you may be using, it will be Taurus season officially. Um, also on the 20th at 1210 PM, Venus enters Aries. So those two things I do want to read to you about, um, beginning with Mercury since he's first Mercury in Aries, direct pioneering, quick witted April 16th, 2019 to May 6th. 2019. And I think May 6th is the first day of Ramadan, if I remember correctly. So um, I'll be doing a fast for that. Some of you may want to join me. Ramadan, you don't eat until after sundown. So you can think about it. You have until now, from now until then to think about it if you want to um, do that with me. So this was written on March 28th, 2019. I'm reading it from um, www.tarot.com. Again, Mercury in Aries, direct, pioneering, quick-witted. Mercury, the planet closest to the sun, represents communication and intellectual perception. Because Mercury is the planet of thinking and Aries is the sign of doing, words tend to flow without a second thought when these two sync up in the sky. This is also a time when we may express our ideas with more passion than usual. Mercury in Aries opens us up to new concepts and perspectives. Aries, as the first sign of the zodiac, is the true leader that boldly goes where nobody has gone before. The cosmic combo is all about pushing the envelope and sparking our imaginations so that we open ourselves up to new world possibilities. When Mercury is in Aries, We'll all get straight to the point when mental Mercury is assertive in assertive Aries. Aries waits for no one. So this transit is a time when our minds may grow a little or a lot more restless and impatient. We won't stand still or replay the tape in our minds over and over again. We'll want to charge ahead and to move on to the next thing. Mercury in Aries is also great for opening the lines of communication and giving us the encouragement that we need to say exactly what we think and feel. Since Aries is the sign of me, we'll have the confidence to speak our minds. 
However, our desire to say exactly what we're thinking could become a problem when cooperation, compromise, and sensitivity are required. Our thoughts and speech may become more courageous and innovative when Mercury's in Aries and, and they get together. Flashes of insight make it easier for us to think of fresh solutions to problems that have been hanging over our heads for too long. Don't second guess yourself. Your, th your first thoughts are often your best ones during this transit. Catch this inspiration as fast as you can because the Aries influence means these bursts of brilliance will disappear just as quickly as they appeared. Mercury, um, retrograde in Aries, we don't need to go over, thankfully. And if we don't need to go over, if you were born with Mercury and Aries either, but if you were born with that and you want to read further, they have that here for you. I'm going to move on to Venus in Aries. Also from www.tarot.com, Venus in Aries, daring, passionate, adventurous. The transit is from April 20th, 2019 to May 15th, 2019. That's another May 6th. Right. The first one, um, the Mercury ends on May 6th, but the a 15 is also a six. Um, so that's cute. It's impossible to ignore our yearnings when Venus unites with the fiery sign of Aries. Venus is the planet of love, money, beauty and desire. And when she moves through independent Aries, we're reminded that our own needs matter and it's up to us to make sure they get met. It's impossible to ignore our yearnings when Venus unites with the fiery sign of Aries. They're repeating the same thing. <laughs> they repeated the same paragraph twice. Oh my God, that's funny. Um, many astrologers consider Venus in Aries to be a difficult placement because Venus's calm, soft sweetness just doesn't align with rambunctious and self-focused style of Aries. While Venus normally thrives on cooperation and two-way partnerships, her placement in Aries triggers a time to practice self-love. It's about putting yourself first, trying new things and discovering what will satisfy you most. After all, it's only when you understand love and embrace yourself that you draw the best things to your life. And that's what Venus in Aries is all about. When Venus is in Aries, the first sign of the zodiac, it offers us all a chance to make a fresh start in matters of love, money, and self-awareness. Old patterns and lackluster relationships have no place anymore once Venus enters Aries. Instead, we thrive on new experiences and adventurous encounters, and we're more spontaneous in our pursuit of pleasure. Aries is a highly independent sign that is largely focused on itself and its own interests. Therefore, love and relationships can sometimes seem selfish or imbalanced during Venus's transit through Aries. But for the single lover, this can be an amazing time to identify your own needs and to explore your options. Venus in Aries ignites a courageous fire under us that makes us more confident and assertive when meeting and interacting with others. And for those in relationships, exploring each other's personal desires and experiencing new things together is a surefire way to reignite the fire between you. So, while it seems like there's a very self-centered air to Venus in Aries, it's really about enhancing your love life by way of yourself. In terms of money, Venus and Aries is the time to invest in yourself, not on major purchases or long-term investments, but with exciting things that boost your confidence and zest for life. A new outfit, hairstyle, or an active weekend getaway will revitalize you and add to your fulfillment. Beware though, you want instant gratification under Venus and Aries, and you could go overboard spending without considering the consequences. Overall, Venus and Aries isn't a time to fall deeply in love or to make long-term commitments. Think of it more so like a test phase where you get to test and taste different flavors before you settle on just one. It's about living in the moment without fear from the past or concern for the future. It's a time to go after what you desire and to not settle for anything less. They go on to talk about if you were born with Venus and Aries. Um, and you may want to read about that. So I think Chiron is still in Aries. And of course the sun is in Aries. And is that it? That may be it. All right. That's plenty though, isn't it? <laughs> All right. So that's it for as far as reading. Let's see what the dice say. It's 50-50 is with what we're starting. 
stay in bed and cocktail. Whoop. Spruce says email. Somebody could be making contact for whatever reason. This is the general re reading, so it could be business or a friend or something. It doesn't have to be romantic or anything. We can get away. Similarly, it can be whatever. It can be you going by yourself, like we just um, heard about with Aries. But the last die says 29, which is about spiritual partnership. So again, that can be a friendship, a business partnership, something familial um, or romantic. With the cards, as I mentioned before, advice i'm beginning with envy from my soul's journey cards i also pulled out my archangel michael cards um in recognition of the holy days this week and that deck i'm going to begin with it's time to leave this unhealthy situation so those of you to whom that applies can get thinking about that already from now um with the cards i'm starting with be willing to forgive again i think i start with this almost all the time I, I open right to that all the time. With the animal tarot, the six of winter, which is about moving into calmer, stiller waters, um, maybe even traveling, could be connected to weekend getaway, and just things, energy moving, getting unstuck, you know, things are getting better, period. When this card shows up. And lastly, again, with um, the angel tarot, I'm beginning with the king of earth, who's a Capricorn Virgo like Jesus for me, um, or Taurus, or someone like into those traits or attributes. Generous, professional, responsible, and practical. A successful time. Confidently accept opportunities you're offered. You have the Midas touch. Um, I open to the King of Earth, or Pentacles, opposite the Queen, the Nine, the Ace. I mean, it was really, really looking good um, for this week in terms of abundance. Maybe that's because of the Venus stuff. But right away... I open to the seven of air. So this is the, it represents the energy of joy stealing for me. This is what I, that's what I call it. Fucking joy stealing. It can be actual theft, um, you know, or, or loss. Did I mention people's jewelry breaking, stones breaking, um, because they're in the midst of protecting us from the negative energy that's been hurled at us. Um, I just, I have so many clients right now. I don't think I said any of this. I'm, okay. If I did, forgive me. Um, but I have so many clients right now who are, um, you know, getting the protections because we all need it. And, you know, myself included. I had a couple of run-ins with people. I'm, I'm just not letting them um, drain my energy. I'm just keeping my energy clean, protected, um, keeping myself and my home smudged and all of that. Um, but I have people that are coming back for divine like cleanses, repeat clients and stuff because they're just feeling themselves under attack. Um, very, very touching story today. One of my um, clients, she's autistic and um, she got another cleanse today. But she talked about after her last one for which she, you know, she bought one for her and her masculine last time. And, you know, she just said since then their family has just been really, really thriving. Um, they had a baby. Baby's doing awesome. Um, and my client's just feeling well, you know, just wonderful. Sometimes she said um, that sometimes she doesn't even feel like she has autism anymore. And I just couldn't be any more blessed um, by that than, you know, I mean, to me, it was, it was a tremendous blessing, not just to her um, that she was sharing with me, but I was blessed by it also. Uh, so there is light, <laughs> you know, it's a positive side to the fact that we're under this severe attack too, you know, there's good stuff that comes out of it. But the, I, I see this seven of air and it, I'm just right away thought of thinking about this is, you know, somebody with seven swords, seven daggers. They want, they want to stick in your back. This is a thief. This is a liar. Um, some, you know, a negative energy that causes you to lose some sort of valuable, even if it's a non-tangible valuable, like a your peace of mind. People are getting headaches, you know, from these energy attacks and stuff. Plans and need revision. More going on than meets the eye and poor timing. Sometimes the seven of air um, is about like lack of confidence and stuff. But again, it can be something in the air, some sort of um, negativity that causes you to you know, like, you know, be drained and to feel less than. 
and or maybe just going through a hard time with the when the world when the world shows up so major arcana card the world um number 21 for me has a fire element energy whether that makes any sense <laughs> to people or not um it just feels like fire and um it tends to line up that way when i well, we'll see what happens if it shows up in the placement. A job well done. Joy, contentment, and gratitude in the path toward enlightenment. So this is about the universe um, easing us out of a difficult situation. Ugh, the world and the seven of air together. Yeah, we could have just had something that was stealing our joy um, for a long time. Like something like the, the Archangel Michael card described. It's time for you to like get out of this unsavory situation or whatever it said. Um just staying in a situation too long that you needed to leave that just it's just been draining and and you've just been unhappy whether it's um you know work or some sort of relationship or something just hasn't been going good so we want to cut ourselves away from whatever that is with the ace of air brilliant new ideas and inspirations seeing the truth of a situation and maybe a challenging beginning um but it's you know, a beginning nonetheless a fresh start for you after you cut yourself away from negativity and put the effort in you're going to get the outcome that you're seeking skilled work is rewarded learning all there is to know about a topic and maybe even going back to school this is the eight of earth or eight of pentacles but they're also showing major arcana card eight justice which represents the planet venus and the sign of libra where the full moon is going to be on the 19th uh, this week fair and just decisions do what you know is right stand up for your beliefs So again, it may be to cut somebody off um, that just take, you know, brings more drama than happiness to our lives and represents that seven of air for us. And it is Major Arcana card 18, the moon. So again, there's a full moon this week on the 19th. Important psychic insights, events behind the scenes. Release fears that hold you back. The moon calls for us to um, really use our intuition, um, pay attention to the feelings, gut feelings, sounds, things we see, all of that. Um, and uh, help, hopefully that can strengthen us so that we can move forward even despite what we don't know and what not, you know, what we haven't gotten clarity about yet. Light has not been shown on it yet. The sun hasn't shown on it yet. But we're still confident enough because of we've been receiving intuitive messages and things. And the overall energy is the page of earth, scholarly, dependable, patient and successful. Good news about financial matters, wanting to do something more challenging and a new area of study. So, I mean, it's pretty straightforward as it relates to work and finances and money. Um, yeah, it's about you making, earning your money through work. Or maybe increasing your earning potential through some sort of class or um, mentorship, apprenticeship, um, you know, going to school, even college, stuff like that. Um, I'm, okay, being told to say something about health. This happened last week, too. So any health problems that come up with the page of Earth usually has to do like with emotional issues but it can be in a sense that you feel that something is physically like medically wrong maybe even go to the doctor and then it'll be like uh oh, you're fine i'm not sure why you're here and that's because again it's really um an emotional situation something that you, through which you're going um and there are doctors for that too and there are people you know, um, other people you can help talk to about stuff like that, or you can look into holistic and or homeopathic uh, healing, like energy healing and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think that's all I'm being said made to say about the page of Earth. I think it's pretty cool though, because the page of Earth, for me at least, represents first and foremost among the Earth signs the sign of Virgo. And again, I think Jesus is a Virgo, and this is his week. It is Holy Week. Um, so I think that's why we're starting with this.
crown in the masculine. It is another eight, the eight of fire. Events moving at a fast pace. Delays are over. Many things are happening at once. So eight's a very karmic number. Um, it's usually about similar to the eight of earth. Like, you know, getting what you gave. So if that was negative energy, that's what you're going to be getting. If that was positive energy, that's what you're going to be getting. If it was indifferent and you didn't do anything, then you're not going to get nothing. You know, that. That's pretty much how it goes. Uh, surrounding the masculine is the knight of air, intelligent, decisive, idealistic, and tireless. Events that occur with great speed. Take time to carefully review your options so you can come up with creative solutions. The knight of air is a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, or someone likened to those traits or attributes, and can also represent Mercury himself, or even Venus herself, particularly this week when they both enter Aries, fire sign Aries. And speaking of Venus, masculine subconscious, it is another eight. He's crowned by an eight, rooted in an eight. Um, justice, which represents the planet Venus and the sign of Libra, which she rules, where the full moon will be on the 19th. Fair and just decisions. Do what you know is right. Stand up for your beliefs. Now, what you know is right, is not necessarily what's legal. Um, I told this to... I said this in my daily reading for today, which I don't even remember. I don't even remember distributing. Um, but yeah, I said that the there have been a lot of things that were legal that are just not right. They're not morally right. They're not ethically right. So when this is like do what's right, it's what's right for you. What's right in your heart? What is your conscious telling you is right? What is your what is going to affect your karma in a positive way? You put your effort, your energy towards something. Is it going to be that positive or that negative one? And then what are you going to get back? That's what the question is. So just so you guys know, when I picked up the page of Earth, behind it also upright is Major Arcana card 12, Awakening, which is the hanged man. There could be a feeling, um, if not an actual period of suspension, limbo, um, pause. It's an opportunity for you to look at things from a different perspective. You may be at a temporary standstill and it's important to be yourself, honest with you. So again, like what's in your heart? Also up right behind the hangman is the nine of water. Your wish comes true. Concerns fade away and you have a love of life. So particularly in this placement, the Venus and the masculine's conscience, um, it's what he's thinking about. It's his conscience. It's his, it's his life. It's not necessarily an actual energy that he's dealing with. And so, um, you want to be focused on doing the right thing, masculine, the right thing for you, crowning the feminine. And remember, we just heard that that's what Mercury, um, Venus rather in Aries is all about doing what's best for you and self-love first and foremost, above everything else. Yeah, so that's probably what that's about there. Uh, crying in the feminine is the seven of fire. Defend your beliefs and decisions. Stand your ground, but choose your battles wisely. You're not going to fight every single fight. So like I said, I came into contact with some, you know, people that were acting very low vibe. And I just, I just couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> I just couldn't. And it's not that I'm incapable. I didn't want to engage. I didn't want to lower my own vibration, you know, um, engaging. But it's a choice. You know, maybe next time I'll choose, I'm in the mood to. I'm here, you know, I'm with all the shit. What's up? That day I wasn't in the mood. Um, so same thing goes for you. You choose. And there will be conflict <laughs> for, um, you know, from which to choose. The five of air, an unwise choice. Learn what you can from this situation. Review everybody's motives. So why do we have to review everybody's motives? Because they're backstabbers, they're fake friends, they're gossips. So again, we're going to want to watch out for that sort of energy. Um, feminine subconscious, the page of water, intuitive, sensitive, artistic, and friendly. A new person enters your life. A relationship begins a new phase and there are heightened psychic abilities um, that you may be experiencing, particularly in this placement of conscious and subconscious. Crowning. Ooh, it's another eight, but not one that I like very much. It's the eight of air, an illusion of being trapped, a lack of self-confidence and being afraid to take action. So I mentioned that self-confidence could be the issue when we talked about the seven of air. At the root, the king of water, trustworthy, compassionate, respected and cultured. Open your heart and mind to those around you. Trustworthy and heartfelt advice and charity work. For me, charity work is love. Um, like the page here, the king is also a cancer 
Pisces or Scorpio or someone lacking to those traits or attributes. What is at the heart of the matter this week? Ooh, the five of fire, competing goals, bothersome details, conflict with others. Um, some may have two men or masculine energies from which to choose. They could be um, what's competing or this could be for something um, at work. That's possible too. Feminine has like love and emotion on her mind. And this can really be about the, um, the masculine, like trying to beat, like he's running back. You see how fast um, the Knight of Air is? He's known, as, he's known for being tireless and for you know having great speed. He's like running back toward the feminine. It's facing this way. To beat out the competition. So like I was saying, I was feeling somebody else possibly there. Maybe a water sign. Because that's another character that's sitting here. The king of water. Um, this knight of air who's running back. Doesn't have to be an actual um, air sign. But absolutely, that's a great possibility. Particularly Libra. Feminine for us, we're going to want to, um, with the five of wands, the seven of wands, and the five of swords together, we're definitely going to want to um, be careful that we're not being set up by somebody. That can be what this eight of air is representing for us. Some sort of setup. Like... You ever heard the saying, it's something like somebody else is loading the gun for you to shoot? You know? Somebody else up to something, but then they like put the evidence in your hand. You get caught holding the bag, as they say. Be careful of setups. Again, this is a time of Judas's. This is a time of fake friends, of jealousy, of envy, um, and of the need for protections and energy healing, whether you do it yourself or you go somewhere else, um, whether that somewhere else is me or another somewhere else, this is the time um, where this, you know, this sort of thing is very, very important. Because what happens after after this week, it's the resurrection, it's the born again, it's, it's when we are emboldened and strengthened. Right, we're you know um, at our most powerful. It's one of the most powerful periods of the year for us. So you know the dark wants to preclude you from making it to that. So there are you know manifestations on this plane of that energy showing up to shut you down. Masculine competing in some way uh, with someone. It can it can be romantically, and trying to you know make his way back like beat them to the punch as they say or used to say <laughs> um and the feminine possibly being set up by somebody um but i don't have to keep guessing let's clarify with my animal tarot beginning with the six of winter the challenging times are over coming to an end and now you can now breathe a sigh of relief let go of the past and embrace the happier times ahead also, the three of spring. Stop to take time to review and to make long-term plans, capitalizing upon your past successes. It's appropriate for you to pat yourself on the back for all of your accomplishments. But you also may need to exercise some patience for the next phase to play out. Especially if that hangman energy gets to us, right? We have to wait. That's like a period of limbo. Six of winter. The ten of autumn. Contentment comes from knowing that your finances are safe and, and secure. And that your family's material needs are taken care of. It's important to honor traditions and to have pride in your heritage and the accomplishments of your ancestors. Speaking of that, I still do need to talk to you guys about Native American prophecy. I still need to do that. 
Um, Ace of Winter. Implementation of your brilliant new idea. Make it off to a rocky start, but keep going. The challenges will help you to refine your plan and to reshape your goals into something even better. Six of Winter. Do one more. It's the King of Autumn with which we started the other spread. So on this note, I will definitely stop. Everything's going to turn out great. Projects will be stunningly successful. Exciting new career opportunities are possible. And money or resources that come your way will be invested wisely. The King of um, Earth again is a Virgo. Taurus. Or Capricorn. Or someone likened to those traits or attributes. Be an older man who ends up facilitating like some sort of networking, you know, opportunity for you, introducing you to somebody you need to know to, for your work, improve your um, opportunities, introduce you to greater opportunities or something, maybe in business, could be in love too, somebody older, <laughs> your vision, creativity, and dedication to your cause have brought you great success. In fact, it may be in your best interest to get a partner to assist you in your endeavors or to expand the number of people helping you. Overall energy, the six of autumn, your success and prosperity have allowed you to pay off debts, acquire wise loans, or to receive a grant or scholarship. In return for heaven's blessings, be sure to share the wealth with others through donations of time or money to reputable charities. This is the second time we saw charity show up too, right? It's right here with the King of Water. He's all about charity work. The Six of Autumn um, also in every area, basically, love, finances, health, um, spirituality. It's, it's a good omen. It's about increase, um, positivity. To me, it's a card that represents unconditional love. Um, and charity does as in, in general, right? Charity is about giving and or receiving without agenda. So that's unconditional love, even if it's like with a stranger. We're exchanging in that moment. We're exchanging just for the sake of exchanging. Not because I want something from you, you want something from me. Crown of the Masculine, atop the Eight of Fire. It's another eight. It's Major Arcana card 17, the star. You're about to take a big leap forward with your life. Worry will be replaced with optimism. Fear with hope and joy is coming home to roost. So it's like the Eight of Fire. Um, this is something going on behind the scenes. It's also about communication. And it's like this is um, leading, whether it's a communication, which I think it is, um, or, you know, the karmic energy behind the scenes at work, it's going to lead him to an opportunity where that, like where he is propelled forward. Both of these cards actually about communication, the star and the eight of fire. Um, but also the star is about our dreams coming true, wishes being granted, prayers being answered. So I'm sure that, um, that is something for what the masculine has been asking, he's, especially with the eight of winter sitting here. That's about being stuck. So I'm sure he's been praying, making intentions, trying to manifest movement. And then he got it. Karmic energy stepped in movement. There was communication and he is about to take a big leap forward. Joy is coming home to roost. Amen. Atop the night of air, the four of spring, it's time to kick back, relax, and to celebrate all that you have. Joy arises from success in your career, the completion of a project, or a very happy home life. So we already got two, the first two cards for the masculine talking about joy. And again, this is sitting here underneath the star, which is about his prayers being answered. Um, the fact that he has manifested, you know, what he intended to. Whether that is a relationship, engagement, marriage, um, something going on with his household or his house itself, the home that's making him feel good. It's about joy. And I think, he, again, he's running toward uh, what's going to make him happy and trying to beat somebody else to it. Masculine subconscious atop um, that other eight, Major Arcana Card Justice, is the Queen of Autumn. Thoughtful caring, creative, and ingenious. You'll be given advice that's both practical and creative, and it should be followed precisely. 
focus only upon the positive in every situation or person. The queen of autumn is a Capricorn Virgo or Taurus or someone likened to those traits or attributes. And with this queen of autumn and the justice and also in consideration of the four of spring and the night of air. It can be, um, this night of air can represent somebody who's back in the home or like back where he belongs. Maybe he had strayed away from the queen of autumn. Um, or maybe he wants to get away from the queen of autumn. And again, he wants to run that way. He wants to leave her behind. Maybe he wants even to divorce her possibly. Not necessarily an earth sign, but very good chance. I'm feeling Capricorn most, but that's not necessarily either. Um, I guess of the night of air, I'd be feeling um, Aquarius most with the star sitting here. Either of which could be things for which he prayed. You know, could have been he could have prayed to um, be able to separate from this marriage. People people are feeling stuck. Could be happy to be unstuck or to get getting unstuck. Remember the eight of swords is here too. Uh, let's see what the feminine says. Atop the seven of fire, it's another seven. Major Arcana card, seven, the chariot. You can successfully balance various or opposing energies once um, at once through determination and focus. You've earned the rewards and recognition that you're receiving. The chariot is a card of victory. Um, so being coupled with something where you're to stand your ground and to choose your battles wisely and but fight the good fight when you decide it, that's a win for you. You know, that's about making the right choice. Major Arcana card, the, chari the chariot also represents the sign of cancer. Um, it can have to do with moving, movement, modes of transportation. Um, yeah, victory, like I said. Can definitely be uh, metaphorical, like movement forward. When coupled with that other seven. Because we're talking about putting a, uh, making a decision, putting our foot down, and then wanting to move forward with whatever it is we decided to do. The chariot says that we, you know, have taken our own life by the reins. We are in the driver's seat. You know, we are in control of our own destiny. Atop the five of air and the conflict, the princess of spring, energetic, outgoing, optimistic, and creative. Creative opportunities that you feel passionate about are flooding your way. Personal growth and broadened horizons will spark fresh and original ideas. Um, so again, there's an opportunity here and somebody may be trying to trick you out of it um, or screw you out of it, feminine. And it may be somebody that you consider a friend. Um, could be competition at work too. Just be mindful. The Princess of Spring or Wands um, comes with news of this of this opportunity. We already knew where it was coming, right? Um, that we already talked about before I laid the second cards. And so, yeah, I'm still saying the same thing. Be aware of somebody trying to trip you up and maybe take that from you atop the page of water the eight of summer you can you feel that there's more to life than what you're living so it's time to move on So another card of movement moving forward moving on and you may be moving from a situation that isn't good for you or perhaps you're being drawn to what would make you happy either way you're in control and again we see that here with the seven, a uh, major arcana card, seven, the chariot, as well as the seven of wands that sits underneath it. You have, that was you putting your foot down, you taking control, you saying you're not going to run me around anymore. You don't get to tell me, um, you know, when I should be left holding the bag. I decide if I'm going to, you know, fall prey to you and, and let you placate me with some bullshit or something. That, that's up to me. 
atop the um, eight of air and the energy of being stuck, very devil-like, which may have been why I felt first and foremost the Queen of Autumn is a Capricorn, because it's a similar kind of energy, Major Arcana card, the devil to the eight of air or eight of swords, both of which are about being um, feeling stuck, feeling trapped. So top that eight of swords is major arcana card, the world, but you talked about that. And as I was shuffling, um, when the world came up and I said, somebody may feel, um, that they've been in a situation far too long and they need to get out. And that does make sense with what we just read about Venus and Aries. And now here we're having the scenario again. Uh, so it may involve a fire sign because again, major arcana card 21, the world has a, is a fire uh, element card for me. Congratulations on successfully accomplishing what you've set out to do. You've made it through the challenges and incorporated the lessons that life offered you with grace and courage. So you're, um, this time where you felt stuck, you're being moved out of that. All these cards of movement, moving you away from the stuck energy at the root, um, atop the king of water is the nine of winter. Your worries and fears aren't real. They're fueled by focusing on the negative, which gives power to that of which you're afraid. Stop worrying, let go of fear, and everything will be okay. King of Water, Cups, usually not somebody who's afraid. He's got like his emotions and whatnot in check. And this can be representative of somebody who was having sleepless nights because they had just so much going on. Um... Somebody who wants to be understood emotionally. I was talking about emotional health before. Somebody feeling misunderstood, seeking forgiveness. I was saying about something about coming back into the house. Or returning home, returning to family. It applies here too though. Somebody feeling very misunderstood. And so maybe that's what this is too for some. Maybe it's not somebody intentionally trying to set you up. Um, some sort of misunderstanding occurs. Be sure to um, say what you mean, mean what you say, and, and demand, demand that, um, put your foot down, of other people too during this time or at least this week or whatever this period atop the um five of fire at the heart of the matter it's another seven of fire so now we have one crossing the other be assertive believe in yourself and don't let anyone take away your personal power trust that your inner guidance is true and follow it completely so this is um Again, just a week of watching your back. I don't want anybody to feel like I'm trying to say, like, to walk around scared or on eggshells, uh, paranoid or anything like that, because that's absolutely not. Um, but just be mindful, conscientious of, you know, this period of time. Historically, long before we got here, what this period has been about um, and how often, again, in history, long before we got here, people um, thought that other people cared about them and it turned out they didn't and they were really their enemy. And so, you know, it, it's still happening. Um, so I'm going to shuffle a couple of these. I don't want to do too much because I want to get to the actual advice and get this reading up to you. But we're starting with be willing to forgive. Ask your angels to clear your mind and body of any past pain in exchange for peacefulness. You know what? I only do one. Opening to you are profoundly clairvoyant. Did I say, what did I say? Clairvoyant. Trust what you see. I don't know what I said. In your mind's eye, as well as with your spirit, your physical sight. Exactly. Exactly. Pay attention. Um, for your spiritual vision helps you with healing, teaching, and guidance. So it's going to help you to watch your back. But we're starting with this be willing to forgive. Like I said, I was feeling over here somebody's looking for forgiveness too. Wants to be forgiven. Wants to be understood. Something like that going on. With the... Um, Archangel Michael cards again we're beginning with it's time to leave this unhealthy situation that could be what all this all this movement cards are about again um, something with the masculine here wanting to leave um, a household possibly a marriage Archangel Michael um, wants to help you to do that too also spend more time outdoors Let 
some more time outdoors. I'll do one more. Ask Archangel Michael to help you with this situation. And lastly, the Soul's Journey cards I was moved to use. Again, beginning with Envy. Opening to Friendship. I understand that a friend is in my life for a reason. But look, friend opposite Envy. After all we've been talking about, Judas isn't shit. Envy. And happiness. That's what they're jealous of, your happiness. It's making other people mad. I'm aware that being happy means that I'm on the right path. Right, they're aware too. That's why they're pissed. Envy had come back to the bottom, by the way. So, masculine soul's journey cards. You're getting growth this week. I want to expand my consciousness and my awareness. Well, guess what? Jupiter, ruler of Sagittarius, that's probably where all this fire is coming from uh, this week, will help you with that. Jupiter went retrograde on the 10th, um, which was last week, or this week, actually, the week which I'm doing this reading, but this reading is for next week. Um, and... In that retrograde period, as when he's not retrograde, he's helping you with growth and expansion still. Um, just a little bit slower than usual. That might be what the um, hangman was, about, was around too. Feminine, for us, death. We're going to have to let go of some situation or circumstance, relationship, whether it's a friendship or whatever it is. I'm learning that endings are merely beginnings. Exactly. Just let go of whatever it is that's not, that no longer fits in your life, doesn't align. It's holding you back. Masculine, Archangel Michael says, believe and trust before going to sleep. Say, Archangel Michael, please enter my dreams. Replace fear with faith and trust. Let me be filled with strength, courage, and confidence. I told you somebody couldn't sleep. Feminine for us. Positive thoughts create positive results. I've been saying this the whole time I've been doing the reading. Divine love and wisdom, I call upon you now. I know that my mind and emotions are eternally and co continuously connected to you. I ask my higher self to be aware and conscious of the love and light that is within every person and situation. Right, we want to find that rather than the dark that is here. Um, masculine, vacuum away fear. Call upon Archangel Michael and Raphael to lift fear-based energy from you, your surroundings, this situation, and everyone involved. So you know what you have to do. You've gotten the same message twice. Feminine, twin flame, the answer to your question involves a spiritually based romantic relationship. Why are people trying to take me down? Why are people stabbing me in the back? Why do people hate me? Because you're a divine feminine, like a true one um, with a twin flame or divine masculine, a, a divine union. Um, masculine, the aid of earth, skilled work is rewarded. Learning all there is to know about a topic and maybe even going back to school. Again, the aid of earth is about where you put your Focus. What you put in, what you get out. You reap what you sow. Garbage in, garbage out. Feminine, the ten of air. It's the end of a difficult situation. Embrace the change and expect things to get better now. Somebody may even be recovering from an addiction. That could be what the Eight of Swords is about too. With this world, that may be this um, the situation that you were in. Some sort of codependent and or addictive situation. Not necessarily um, substance abuse, but that's a possibility. And lastly, ooh, it's another Five of Winter. <sighs> Your current path isn't leading you toward the happiest possible outcome, so why not change it? Always maintain integrity and compassion, but be alert to the hidden agendas of others. Masculine, watch your back too. And this bitch also. I don't care if she's your wife. Feminine. It just keeps getting better. That's why they're mad. They're going to stay mad. It is Major Arcana Card 10, the wheel, which represents the planet Jupiter. I told you Jupiter was coming through to help us. Here he is again. He's already here. Expect a sudden positive change in your life. You can now move forward and make great progress. So we continue to move onward and upward despite the haters. I hope you guys have enjoyed the reading. Thank you again for joining me, liking, sharing, and subscribing. I'll be back with love. Namaste.